All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to Kotobo Space Program, where today we are having a look at yet another wonderful mod, this time in the form of the Farscape module, which is being made by a small group of people on the forums, with the original poster being one forum user Odysseus, and the latest additions to the team being Mike NZ and Commander Spock. And what this glorious piece of work looks to add into the game is a small selection of parts to allow you to build the Farscape 1 shuttle in-game. And now if you don't know what that is, well, it is the beautifully small little shuttle that John Crichton flew in the wonderful Farscape series, which just so happens to be one of my favorite sci-fi TV shows. So this mod holds a very special little place in my heart, and I just love it. So let's just go ahead and jump right on into the space plane hangar and take a look at what this mod has to offer us. Now the first thing we're going to grab here, instead of our usual grabbing another command pod for size comparison, we're just going to go ahead and grab the Farscape module right there. And it is a, a nice little fighter plane sort of style cockpit. It is a tiny little mini shuttle, so nicely aerodynamically shaped, etc. A very, very nice modeling on it, very decent-ish texturing. Best feature on it by far is the clear cockpit view that we have on this thing. It is pretty gorgeous being able to actually see inside the cockpit, and you actually can see the Kerbals through the window, but you, you have to get out of the ship first. I'll show you all how that works when we're on the runway later. But yes, a very, very nice little shuttle. And, well, this is the main body of it. And, of course, the command pod, which can hold a maximum of two crew, which you may have been able to guess by the two seats in there. And it is, uh, well, it's, it's a pretty nice little command pod. It uh, has a reaction wheel, SAS, your typical crew report. A uh, nice little electrical charge of 500. It does also hold 100 liquid fuel 500 monopropellant 120 oxidizer and 700 xenon gas which may seem like a lot for this tiny little ship and well quite frankly it kind of is but <laughs> nonetheless I still quite like it and uh, the reason it has so many resources is because it's to keep down on the part count it's using this one Farscape module for both types of the Farscape shuttle that you can make with this mod uh, in the series for the for Farscape, it, the shuttle started out as Earth technology using liquid fuel, oxidizer, etc., and it flew into space, but then later it was augmented with alien technology, thus the xenon gas that this uses down at the end. So they just kind of threw it both into this one module, I'm assuming to save space. Now the next parts that we do have are down here in engines. And the first engine is the Earth-made Farscape engine, which if we pop this baby on the back there, beautiful. Starting to actually look like a small shuttle now. And this is a pretty decent little engine. It uh, does have an alternator, a control surface with one lift rating. The engine has a pretty good max thrust of 142 atmosphere, 150 vacuum, and an ISP of uh, 18,280 atmospheric and 19,300 vacuum. And it sips fuel daintily at 0 0.071 liquid fuel per second and 0 0.087 oxidizer per second. Has a good gimbling range of 3% and of course, well, you know, while well, the alternator has the electrical charge part. But yeah, nice little engine. Again, sips fuel. Just it barely, barely any fuel whatsoever at all. So this small little 100 liquid fuel in this thing can easily put this shuttle into space with this one engine, which uh, mm, I'm a little torn on for the Farscape series because uh, in the actual TV show, the Farscape one shuttle was launched from a larger space shuttle, so it didn't actually have to get into atmosphere itself, and this thing can very easily do that on its own with plenty of fuel to go to another planet. Uh, but still, a very nice engine nonetheless, pretty good modeling and texturing on it. Uh, the next engine that we have is the Farscape Hetch Drive engine. Now this is the alien engine that was added to the Farscape shuttle later in the series uh, to basically sort of combine it with some of the alien technology from the Moya Leviathan. 
so that it could use alternative fuels and, uh, well, go a hell of a lot faster. And this thing, oh my, uh, it has alternator control surface, of course, but its max thrust in atmosphere is 899.712. Vacuum thrust max is 9 freaking thousand. <laughs> Oh my god. And its engine ISP is 999,100 in atmosphere. And oh boy, 9,994,200 ISP in vacuum. And also sips fuel quite daintily at 0.918 per second max. And yeah. Yeah, you really don't need to get to that max. Uh, so far, when I've been flying with the Hetch Drive engine, oh boy, I've had it at not even like 5% power, and it goes really, 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 really freaking fast. But it's beautiful. It is alien technology, after all, so it is meant to be kind of overpowered. Now, with this Hetch Drive, you could quite easily fly around the entire solar system probably multiple times on the single tank of uh, 700 xenon gas, as that is what it uses for its propellant. And yeah, it's a, it's a pretty, pretty impressive engine. Now the next two parts we have here are in aerodynamics, and they are the wings for this. Oh god, I lost them. Oh, here we go. The Farscape wing left-hand side. There we go. And we also have a right-hand side. Now the reason it's broken up into two rather than just being the normal sort of symmetry thing is because these babies can close themselves. So they have independent animations that need to happen, and they fold inward to protect them during re-entry into the atmosphere, which is uh, quite handy. And plus, it's, it just gives it a nice, more sleek design, a very cool indeed. Now the last three parts are in uh, the utility tab, and they are the landing gear for this thing. And oh, I keep mixing them all up. So there we go. The Farscape nose gear goes, of course, up in the front. Then we have the right-hand side right there, and the left-hand side right there. And boom! You, you, you have a Farscape module, or a Farscape 1 shuttle, with all the trimmings of a hetch drive. Oh boy, oh boy. Now, for action groups, etc., I am going to load up uh, one of the pre-made Farscape 1 shuttles that comes with the mod, so that we can uh, go and test this baby out on the runway, because that is all of the parts that we have in this mod, at least at the moment. I'm personally hoping, they haven't really talked about it, but I'm hoping maybe they add more Farscape parts in here. I don't know, maybe a Peacekeeper Prowler. That might be cool, or perhaps even a Moya itself. That would be fun. Though, holy crap, if you did have a Moya Leviathan, I don't think it would fit in the space plane hangar. All the better. Let's hope that comes one day. But let's launch this baby and show you how fast this one goes. Oh boy, this is just the regular Farscape 1 engine. And actually, before we launch, let's turn on the brakes and take a look at the interior. Now, of course, we have Jebediah in the pilot seat here, and if we get into IVA, it's a pretty nicely detailed cockpit, pretty good and uh, close to the show. I'm quite happy about it. It's very nice looking. Uh, it could use a little bit better texturing, but that's kind of a complaint I have about this whole mod in general. It, it could certainly use some better texturing. Personally, I would like to see all the texturing be more stock-alike rather than trying to be realistic to the show, but that may just be me. Now, let's go back to Bill Kerman's view in the back seat, which is, well, nothing. He can see the back of Jebediah's head, and that is about it, but still a second little seat here. Now, I told you that we could see them in their seats, but to actually do that, you may notice they we, we cannot see them at the moment. You have to actually get them out of the plane first, so let's get Jebediah on EVA. He bounces a bit, and we'll put him into seat one. Oh, he's, he's, he's not standing still, because he's technically still falling. There we go, okay. Board. Excellent, and let's get uh, Bill out on EVA. And he's also still falling. There we go, board. Oh, there we go, excellent. Now they are both in their seats, and you'll notice they're popping through the cockpit. <laughs> or the canopy, rather, of the plane. Uh, yeah, we can, we can see Bill back there in the back seat. 
Uh, Jebediah, sadly, we can definitely see him and his helmet popping through the glass. That is one of the problems with this mod. I think it actually may be fixed, but they haven't pushed it to the, uh, the update yet. Uh, because I have seen pictures on the forum post for this mod that show Jebediah fully inside the cockpit without his helmet bumping through. But uh, for now, <laughs> I guess they haven't updated the downloadable version quite yet. But yeah, that is, that is the Kerbals being able to be seen through there. I love this. I wish more mods would, of course, do this with, of course, the helmets being on the inside. But let's uh, take a little flight. Oh, God, that is kind of... <laughs> <laughs> that was a little unnerving seeing his helmet there, but okay, let's fire this baby up, turn off the brakes, turn on the SAS, and we'll just hit spacebar. We actually may need to throttle down a bit. This is, of course, the liquid fuel and oxidizer burning engine, and it is a pretty decent little engine. You can see we are getting up to speed quite quickly. Now, it does have gimbling, so we can sort of maneuver with it, but it's not enough to take us off. We have to wait until we ramp off the end of the runway. And there we go. Now we're good. Let's put the gears up, and we can now fly. Ah, uh, yes, beautiful. This thing does make for quite a nice little space plane, as, uh, well, we did take off from the runway, of course. And you'll notice with the fuel, we, we haven't even used two, two fuel units yet. And it's, it's going pretty nicely, and we're at half throttle. So let's take it up to full throttle. And aim for the sky. There we go. Now with this engine, we can quite easily get this module into space without any issues. And you could probably get it to Duna. I haven't actually really tried to have it exit uh, carbon orbit quite yet. But with the fuel I've had left when I finally achieve an orbit with this ship, I've had plenty of left to actually do some sort of orbital maneuver. You could easily get to the moon or Minmus, and most likely I'd say you could get to Duna pretty quickly. And actually, probably another planet. You could probably return from Duna as well. We're actually doing better on the fuel than I have previously. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> Normally, when I've been flying it, I've actually launched it from the launch pad and just shot it into the air uh, straight up. <laughs> that's, that's how I always like to test new mods, because I'm just intrigued how well the engine will do if we just go straight up without doing gravity turns, etc. And it's done well. Now, we are getting some heat effects, but that'll pass soon. Let's see. Let's check on the map for our trajectory. Oh, yeah. We can easily get this baby into orbit now. All we need to do is start angling down. There we go, and we can elongate our orbit, and oh yeah, we've got more than enough fuel to go to other places in the solar system. Uh, it's pretty lovely. We have suffered a little bit of heat damage. Oh, that's from the Kerbals. Oh, the Kerbals don't like the heat damage. Probably best to keep them inside. <laughs> but it's kind of weird when they are inside the cockpit properly, because then you can't see them in the seats. It, it's it's kind of unnerving, uh, but yeah... Yeah, they've, they've suffered some damage on this trip. <laughs> oh, good times. But yes, we are, we are in space. So let's actually revert flight to the space plane hangar and go grab the second Farscape 1 shuttle, which has the hatch drive. Oh, good times. Good times indeed. Now, which one does it have firing first? We're actually just going to fly this one purely with the hatch drive. I'm not even going to turn on uh, the Farscape 1 engine. So there we go, we'll flip those around nicely and uh, wait for launch. I am not going to get them out of the cockpit this time, so we'll have uh, empty looking seats there. <laughs> and let's actually put this baby down to like right here, barely on with the throttle. And fire! Now you'll notice the uh, engine effect does still come out of the Farscape 1 engine, the liquid fuel burning one, but you'll notice it is off. That's just where the particle effects come out of. And we're on that tiny, tiny little bit of throttle, and we're already going faster than we did with the liquid fuel engine. <laughs> this, this is the Hetch engine, my friend. It is beautiful. We just keep on gaining speed very, very quickly. And it's beautiful and gorgeous, and look at that thing, it's great! 
Ugh, I love the little things coming off the front. Again, the texturing for me is a little bit odd. I'd really prefer it to be stock alike rather than trying to mimic the show. But nonetheless, it's still quite a good design. And how fast are we going? Oh my word, 600 meters per second. Very good. And again, tiny, tiny amount of throttle. We're actually already getting heat effects. Let's go up. <laughs> We're just going to go straight up with this baby because, well, it, uh, oh god, I actually need to turn off the throttle. We are going to get some heat damage here. <laughs> oh, and we've barely used any fuel at all. We've used four xenon gas. And, yeah, we're still going 800, less than that, meters per second. Let's throttle up again. Back with the heat effects. Okay. <laughs> Oh, I love this Hetch engine. It is just so wonderfully overpowered. Okay, just a tiny, tiny little bump in the throttle. We are now, <laughs> oh god, almost to 14,000 meters per second. Ooh, what's the map say? There we go. Oh my. <laughs> oh yes, over 200,000 meters orbit. Or, uh, yes, 200,000. There we go, so let's level off. We are basically in space now, let's throttle up. We shouldn't get the heat effects now. And just just a little bit of throttle up, just to show you, we're already above 10,000 meters per second. 15,000 meters per second. 20,000 meters per second, and going. It just keeps building up and up and up and up and up. And now, by now, our trajectory is probably exiting the solar system as we are now going at, oh boy, a nice almost 50,000 meters per second. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's gorgeous. That is good. <laughs> 65,000 meters per second. And again, barely drinking any fuel at all. Let's just cut off the engine at 75,000 because my game is actually struggling to keep up. And uh, let's check the map. Oh yeah, we are exiting the solar system. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we're gone. <laughs> we are now flying to another galaxy. <laughs> the Hetch engine definitely may be uh, overpowered, but it is quite a fun one to use. I mean, if we were going for just maybe a minute or so, and we're already this far away from the planet. <laughs> I love it. Oh, uh, but yes, that is pretty much all I have to show you guys on the Farscape module mod. If you would like to check it out for yourself, which I would definitely suggest that you go and do, you can check the link in the description as always. It is a pretty cool little mod, and I really do hope that they continue to add more things into it. I think that would be glorious. And yeah, if you have any fun and amusing moments with these planes, I would love to see them. So uh, tweet me or Google Plus or Facebook me a pic, whichever social medias you use. And uh, yeah, I would love to see them. And of course, I hope you all have enjoyed this episode today and that you do come back for the next win. Hopefully we will be looking at yet another wonderful mod. But until that time, thank you for watching, my friends. And as always... Have a good one. Now off, off to another galaxy. Oh boy, yep. Yep, Jebediah and Bill are gonna die. They're gonna be lost in space, my friends. Later, folks.